Hey guys, it's Friday. Uh, tip of the day, tip of the day. It's pretty hot today. The booth is um, it's pushing 90. Uh, so here's a good idea. I always wear gloves when I'm spraying, especially clear coats and stuff with hardeners in them. But on a day like today, your hands just sweat in these gloves. And all you need, sooner or later when you're spraying, you're going to get one pinhole in that glove. And you don't see it until it's too late. But every time you're pulling the Every time you pull on the trigger, you squirt and sweat out of one of those little pinholes all over your paint job. And uh, so yeah, I'm not gonna wear the gloves for this. And I also wanna show a little, uh, I learned that from Milo Garage. I saw him using a faucet to clean waterborne out of one of his guns. And um, I've, been use, I've been doing this, you know, while I'm spraying the clear, I'm just gonna let that go. I made up a makeshift thing out of a, out of a uh, compound thing. And uh, it actually works pretty good. By the time I'm ready to clean that gun, it's pretty much clean. Because the waterborne cleaner is a special water solution you have to buy. And you can recycle that three or four times through filters. Um, the dirty water gets stored under there. And when it's time to clean it, you use this stuff. It's like a charcoal and all the... Uh, Put a, you put a spoonful of that in there and it, all the uh, paint binds to that and that filters out and then your water is pretty much clean again. You can use it three or four times, but um, just pour some regular water in there and that works pretty good. Milo Garage strikes again. Subaru done, replace hood, bumper, blend fenders. Uh, try to get a Cadillac done this afternoon. Blend, repair, replace. Mask up and spray. All right, Cadillac job. Wipe down, ready to blow off and tack off. Gonna seal it, base coat it, good three coats, control coat, and a couple good coats of clear. I may use the global clear on this one. And here we go. All sealed, still drying a little bit. Time to start blending base coat on.
it was hot in there. If it's not hot enough, I think I'd, I think I'd just crank it up for a little, little bit. Pretty much just so I can get out of here. Wouldn't have taken that long to paint, but it must be incredibly humid outside. It's just pulling in the humid, humid air. Definitely dried quicker than it was drying for me last year, though. But still a little slow when it's humid. This is from that Subaru I did earlier today. Looks like crap, doesn't it? Why paint a textured part? I don't get it. <laughs> if you get dust in it, you can't sand it out and polish it out because then you get a, a, a strange, shiny area. If they're going to. If they're going to make bumpers out of textured plastic, they should just leave them raw, like this section here that I masked off. Well, let's see what we got. Still shiny, that's good. That's just enough so I can... Still a little tacky, but she'll be alright. Nibbin Monday. We do a nice job buffing this. I think we'll hit it with. Um, actually, I'll show you guys what I use. Yeah, this thing was stuffed in the back. It's gonna come out nice. We'll see if it hazes out at all Monday. So for that Cadillac Monday, I'm probably going to go a little overkill with the sanding and polishing, but I'll end up with a nice swirl-free job. I'm going to start with I will hit it with um, P1500, this type of paper from 3M. Um, I'll just go. I skim over it with the DA. I use the uh, I use this DA over here with the interface pad on it. It's more like, like a finished DA, and um, just skim over it quick, and then you can see where the dust is, and you go after the dust a little more, and skim over it again. And um, I didn't have good luck with the Trizac with the with the Sickens clear coats, but um, I will follow through and throw some of this 3,000 grit kind of foamy backed paper and uh, you just put some water on the panel and you run that over and it takes kind of a little bit of the edge off of the 1500 that you just did and then what I will do is I'll hit it with wool pad just to get my initial cut with this the 3M number one and then I'll probably, because it's a dark color and I want to make sure there's no swirl marks, I'll go over it with the uh, white foam pad, that number, also with the number one. And then I'll spray some cleaner down, wipe it all down with one of these type of cloths. And then I will go to this polish, that number with the black foam pad, that number. Um, this step after the first few steps I've done is pretty easy. You just do a nice polished job and that's it. And then without wiping anything off, I switch to the blue pad, blue foam. And I just skim this out over the whole thing. It just breaks up all the smudges and with a nice clean microfiber cloth, just wipe it all down and it should come out very nice, um, swirl free, it'll look really good. And um, those are the steps I'll be taking Monday and that car should look nice.